Right now, the only kind of object we have is uh, object of the size one by one on the grid. But we want to introduce object of bigger size. So we made these two pictures. We want to introduce two more items. And sure, we can just make more prefabs for all of them. It is possible, but not advisable. Because imagine having hundreds of items and making prefabs for each of those items will going to take a long time. Plus imagine later on you change something in how you configure the item game object on the canvas. So you have to go through all those item prefabs and change them. That will take forever. Let's apply the principle of not repeating ourselves and reuse one prefab for items. We need to introduce a container for data of the item. Create a new scriptable object called item data. Inside we want to put public variable for size of item and the texture 2D item icon. Later on you would want to populate this place with more necessary data for your items to function. Open inventory item script and replace variable with item data. So now the item characteristics will be defined by this scriptable object. Open inventory controller. Before we continue, let's extract code from the update into functions with self-descriptive names. So it will not look so cluttered anymore. Good. Now we want to introduce a system to instantiate and add new items into the inventory. And randomize what type of item we will be getting. Create a serialized list for item data. For list of item which will be randomly selected and added into inventory. Create a serialized field for item. Prefab. In the update check if some kind of button is pressed. In case it is pressed, call and create a new method called add random item to inventory. Which will create a new item object on the canvas. Then select one of the items from the list and apply it to the item object. So instantiate the item prefab. Store the reference for the inventory item. We want to create a serialized reference to the canvas transform. Then get the React transform from the newly created inventory item and set the parent to the canvas transform.
stores the reference to the selected item. Now we need to select and pass the random item out of the item list to inventory item. So it will set it up uh, itself. So generate random ID of the item between zero and count of the items in the list. And call and create a new method called set with parameter of item data from the item list. Open the newly created method. Inside this method we want to set up our game object on the canvas. So first assign the reference to the item data. Then get the image and set the sprite on it. We need sprite type instead of texture2d inside the item data. Good. Let's create scriptable objects for diamond, potion and ball. Select inventory controller and set up all the fields. So assign canvas, item prefab and items to list. Let's try to launch this and press the button we have selected to spawn an random object. Ok, we have a problem. I forgot to set the rect transform of selected item when we create a new item. Good, as you can see it creates random item, but those items are of the size one by one. So we will want to resize the object for its size. First open item grid and make the constant variable with the size of the tile public. Go back to the inventory item and we want to set up the size of the object. Create new vector to variable called size. Then calculate the size of the object based on the tile size from the item grid and the size from item data. So we need to multiply count of tiles this item will occupy by the size of each tile.
and set the calculated size to size delta of the rec transform of inventory item. Good. But as you can see our item is not offsetting properly when being placed. Go into item grid. We need to modify place item method to use item data item size. So let's extract the calculation of position into separate method. To calculate the offset we need to pass item we are placing into the inventory. Let's test this. It works, but we have an error because of uh, leftovers from testing code. Let's get rid of this code. Let's test this. So it works, it's offset, but if you click on any unoccupied spaces it throws an error. Because of this part. We select the item and if there is no item it throws an error. Now the object is being properly offset on the screen. Yet if I click in the tile where it is placed, only the top left will be recognized as a tile where I place something. Don't worry about overlapping items. We will deal with them later in the tutorial. This is happening because while our object is visually depicted as being bigger than one tile, on the grid it is referenced only on one tile. So this object only occupy one tile on the grid. So what we need to do is in the place item, when we are assigning the inventory item, we have to cycle through the item height and item width and assign the inventory item reference to every tile. So we are telling to our grid that the specific item is actually present in all of those tiles on the grid. Then we need to remove item we are trying to pick up from the grid. But there is a caveat. You see when we pass X and Y position it will pass the tile which is being pressed. 
to properly remove item from the grid, we need to find the origin of the item. And then cycle through that origin. Let's create a new variable inside the inventory item called on grid position X and Y, which stores the position of the object on the grid. And use this on grid position to cycle through the grid and remove items from the grid. Assign the grid position in the place item. If I try to pick up object now, it will work perfectly fine. But if I try to click somewhere without the item, it will cause an error. This is happening because when we are executing pick up item after getting the item to return, we are trying to access item data on this item. So if there is no item in this grid tile, it will try to interact with null data and throw an error. So let's introduce an exit gate here. Good, except if I try to place a white item like this on the edge. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will get cool perks like being featured like those cool people you can see on your screen right now. Or access to project files. Limits and borders. When we are trying to place an item on the edge of the inventory, it will cause an index out of range exception because you are trying to place a wide item with not enough space for it to fit on the grid. And when it is being placed, it goes out of bounds of the grid. So we need to introduce boundary check. It, so open item grid. Here we need to check if the past position x and y falls inside the boundaries of our grid. So create new method called position check with parameters with position on the grid. When we are checking the boundaries, we return true if the position is inside the boundaries and false if not. Check so the position is less than zero. If it is, it means it is outside the boundaries. This means we return false. And then check that this position is more or equal to the grid size. If yes, again this position is outside the boundaries, return false. In case none of those conditions are met, that means our position is inside the boundary.
Ok, we checked if the specified position is inside the boundaries. But besides that, we want to check the boundaries for object which will occupy multiple grid tiles. Create new method called boundary check with four parameters. Two for origin position and two for the object size. Let's add return true immediately. And start putting together conditions. So first we can reuse position check to check the origin position at top left point of the item. Then check boundaries based on the bottom right position, which is done by adding this hand height to the position of the item. Subtract 1. We need to do this to take into account the fact that minimum size of the object is 1. Then, when we are placing an item, we want to make a check for the boundaries of the item. So find place item. Look where it is being called. And before this call, check for boundaries for item we are trying to place. Good. Now we need to address the elephant in, on the grid. Handling overlapping objects. As you can see, this bow is overlapping with the potion. So what we want to do is, when we are placing an object, we want to check for overlapping objects. And in case we have an overlapping object, replace it with the object we are trying to place. And then return this object from the grid, which we just overlapped with. So now instead of, instead of placed object, the displaced object can be placed by player into a different position. This part of the code is getting too hard to read. Let's extract it into separate method called placeItemInput. Let's redo boundaries check as an exit gate. Now let's check for overlapping item. Create and call method call overlap check. Pass the position and size of the object.
and then we will pass reference to an inventory item variable. This will have a reference to the item we are overlapping with. Ok, inside we want to rename the parameters to avoid confusion. We will cycle through the grid. And we'll be checking if there is an item in this item slot on the grid. We want to assign it to overlap item and continue checking. If in process of checking there is another item and this item is not the same item in the overlap item we already got, we want to return out of this check with false signifying that we have overlapped with two items. And the player will have to find a different place to put his item. Then, in case we are returning out of this place item, nullify the overlap item. In the inventory controller, if overlap item is not null, replace currently selected item with overlap item. Make overlap item null and set rec transform. We need to clean the space from overlap item in the item grid. Inside pickup item we have process of clearing the grid. Let's extract it. And in the inventory controller, call it. Go.
Good. As you can see, if I overlap these items, it gets reselected. But multiple overlapping items doesn't work properly. I see, we are clearing the grid from the overlapping object after placing the placeable object, causing it to clear the grid from the placed object. Clear the grid from overlap object before placing an object. Good. Now let's address another annoying issue of the offset. You see when you carry the item around, it is being dragged by the center point. But when it is being placed, the game uses the mouse position as the top left corner of the item, which can be clearly seen here. So what we want to do is to offset the mouse press similar to how we offset the item icon. Inside the process mouse input, if we are dragging the item, we want to take into account the size of the item offset for click. Store mouse position into variable. Use it in the get tile grid position. Then if selected item is not null, modify position of X by subtracting the offset of the half of the item size. Then you want to add the offset to position Y. Let's test this. Good. Admittedly code starts to look a little like spaghetti. We will address it at the end of the grid inventory segment of tutorial. Good, this is it for this episode. Special thank you to each May, this old Hashdu for their generous support. With best regards, see you in the next episode.